Hey guys, it's Robert from ICG Crusaders, and... And it's Justin here again, I'm back. Yeah, and today, uh, and like, you can probably see in the background, there is Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, like I was doing a recording with fellow ICG Crusaders member Chrissy, and, uh, well, that's just filler, you, you can see that in the background. Anyway, today, and me and, and Justin are going to be talking about, well, what we didn't cover during you know, our session, because I realized that during our, and, you know, during our session today, we weren't able to talk about, like, you know, most of the stuff that I had on this list. Um, of most, it's just like, um, I was talking about, uh, I, mean, I don't think if I even got to this, uh, talking about upcoming Let's Play in the works, and basically all the stuff that's going on with the channel, like, I'm actually going to start putting effort forward. <laughs> um, let's see. Talk of upcoming, I mean, upcoming Let's Play, yeah, there we go. Um, the next Let's Play I'm going to be doing is a very, I mean, like, a lot of people I mean, probably are just, oh, oh, this is interesting. I never thought that you would actually do something like this, I mean, like, as the first Let's Play. Um, the first Let's Play is going to be Xenoblade Chronicles X. Xenoblade Chronicles X is a huge JRPG game. It's very open world. It's just, it's a very relaxing experience, I mean, along with its huge generated world it's kind of crazy but uh i don't know it's just i think that game would actually be the best idea for the first let's play i mean i was originally thinking hey wind waker you know like that, that was what i was first very passionate about i was just like oh i got this game for my friend so i'm just like oh i should give that a try as my first let's play but as time grew on, I was just realizing, you know what, I don't have any motivation because I haven't even completed this game yet, and I haven't even played it for a very long amount of time, so I shouldn't even get, like, I shouldn't even try to do, like, blind Let's Play. Hold on, I gotta take off my socks. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, we're, we're doing, like, a, we're doing, like, a webcam call right now, but it's, um, it's all, it's all gravy. But, uh, and Xenoblade Chronicles X, I personally think that it's going to be a different experience, definitely, from what Wind Waker originally was. What was, a, what was Wind Waker? Oh, I don't know. It, it was just, like, it, it was there. It was there. I, I, I tried it multiple times. Like, I tried it actually three times to do the first two episodes. <laughs> so I just thought, you know what? Lost cause. And then for a while, I was just like, oh. I'm not even doing any Let's Plays right now. I should actually be doing something. <laughs> you know, do something productive, but, you know. I, 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 what, what are your thoughts? Do you think that Xenoblade Chronicles X is going to be a good first Let's Play? Um, well, personally, I think that it is. And, first of all, I'm just going to, you know, little thing for right here in this. You're going to be cutting what I'm saying out right now, but I just want to ask, um, is... Audacity picking up my voice through your microphone from, or is it picking up the actual source? Because I saw that the audio waves are really, really small right now. And I'm oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's actually from my actual microphone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just want to, like, you might need to boost my voice for whenever I'm talking. Oh, right yeah. Um, just, just worry about that. Oh, easy. I can do this. Here we go. All right. Let's see here. I'm boost the scale. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, yeah, so we can just cut that out if we need to, but, um... Oh, no, 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 it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. it's good. All right, cool, cool. All right, cool, so you're asking about what I think about Xenoblade Chronicles as being a, you know, a Let's Play, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, um, I really think that, you know, it sounds like a really good idea. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles X, you know, I personally don't have any experience with the game, but I have a little bit of knowledge about it, and, um, I have some... I do have experience with... Uh, just like some some gameplay footage online that sort of thing uh, it really looks like a really in-depth game it has a lot of features to it, it has yeah. a lot of um, functionality I would like to say that um, it is most definitely one of the best games that make that Nintendo has that makes use of um, the gamepad um, just in terms of a physical hardware manner but in terms of you know gameplay and that sort of thing um, it's definitely it, it'll be a lot of fun to see to look at um, to watch and 
I think it has, um, it just overall has tons of content. It's really just over, overflowing with, um, with things to do and, you know, it'll, it'll definitely make a great Let's Play, man. So, yeah, that's my, yeah. That's my two cents right there. Yeah, 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 I, I, I agree, I, I agree completely, like, um, that's pretty much why I was thinking, oh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, oh, that sounds like a really good Let's Play to, um, firsthand, I mean, it's like, okay, I might as well just say this firsthand, uh, with Xenoblade Chronicles X, it's one of the worst games right now for, um, if you need, like, guidance, guidance, like, uh, because most of the guidance is provided by the game itself, like, it has tons of info, tons of different things that really make it special, like, in many different cases, I enjoy the game for its sole passion of, well, it can really lead you to all the objectives which Xenoblade Chronicles 1 didn't. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is kind of like, it, I, I just, it, it's bad touch. I mean, I bought it for like $90. Oh, ha ha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, it, it's because I really supported the creators and I wanted to get my money out there because it's just like, okay, maybe if you worked on the game a little bit more, like, I know that you worked on it for pretty, uh, like a whole bunch, but Xenoblade Chronicles X, hmm, it definitely exceeded my expectations and i know that um popular youtubers out there they haven't even done a let's play of this game yet so that's definitely going to be like ripe territory i gotta i gotta get it well i gotta strike it while it's hot because the wiki is absolutely horrible at offering information beyond like oh character this is the character this is like their personality whatever this is what they look like by the way and it's all that sort of th all that sort of stuff. I don't think that that's actually reasonable. That and like, oh, Xenoblade Chronicles. You, you need anything from Xenoblade Chronicles One? Oh, we got all the data right here. We have everything, like every single collectible in the entire game. Xenoblade Chronicles Wiki is an absolute wasteland when it comes to Xenoblade Chronicles X because they're just like, all right. We haven't touched Xenoblade Chronicles because it's just like, there's no new content being added to it, so we should just leave it alone. Whatever. We, we, our work here is done. And I don't know, it's just... I want to give people guidance on a game that doesn't offer really that much at all. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of been my thing. That I yeah. really just, yeah. yeah it's... Definitely. Huh? No, no, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I just wanted to say that um, there's definitely the, the um, in terms of the people out there who are, are most definitely interested in, in content that is new and unique. Um, and I like to say, like, over on my channel, um, like, even though, you know, my, you know, my, my commentary is kind of bad and my, you know, my, the, the output, graphical output of my computer isn't that great, and the overall video is pretty, you know, mediocre at best. It's um, a work in progress. I would like to it's, say it's a work you know, in progress. It's, it's in progress, but the yeah. thing is, is that, like, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of different, you know, uh, content that other people could be, you know, watching on, you know, for example, like YouTube or something. Yeah. Um, but it's it's the video that it, I got quite a number of views on that video, even though it was you know it's sloppy, you know, yeah. Because you know the thing is, is that it was a it, it's a game that I played in the open alpha, and that means that like no other YouTubers, almost no other YouTubers are playing that, um, and it really gave people an idea of just like what the game was like, what gameplay was like, um, and. You know, it was just something that, um, even, like, under any other circumstance, I wouldn't have really been able to really take advantage of that. But since it was a new game that no one was playing, um, it made it so it was something that, uh, people actually enjoyed watching and seeing. And so I really think that, um, that, you know, you're really putting time and effort into, uh, making a, a walkthrough and let's play of yeah. um, Cineplay Chronicles X, um, it'll, um, people will, I think people will really like this. So, so yeah, right on, man. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, um, where I'm also trying a different sort of style, like, I noticed that a lot of what I do in these videos is that I'm constrained to a time limit. Time limits are the absolute bane of my existence, because it's sort of like, alright, I want to get to this point, I want to get to this point, and no matter how much time it takes, I want to get there, I don't want to rush through everything, I, it, yeah. It's where often in Xenoblade Chronicles X, like I even did a practice recording the other day, and I was just realizing, you know, this game, I realized that if I want to show off all the features, I'm going to have to make one separate video that's basically all the content uncut. And the other um, video is just for, like, regular viewers, whatever. They're, they're just like, okay, I need this information, can you give me it? Or I want to watch the cutscenes or whatever. I can offer that. I mean, sure, that's just basically, you, you're ripping the I mean, a strawberry off the shortcake and eating that and not eating the rest of it, but it's like, uh, whatever, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, that's how, yeah, that's how I would look at it. It's just like, you're just eating the strawberry on top of the shortcake. You're not really getting deep into it. You're not putting your feet in the sand, you know? Whatever. Yeah, definitely. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, it's like, the other day I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll put a little spice into this, why not, because, um, one of the voice actors, um, from Fire Emblem Fates, like, the one that's coming out, uh, we'll get back on that later, but, uh, Yuri Lowenthal, he was actually one of the voice actors in Xenoblade Chronicles X, so I was just like, oh, this is a change of pace. I didn't know that this was the voice that I'm actually going to be working with. So I was just like, you know, I might try something a little festive. I tried to make my character look like Corrin from Fire Emblem Fates, and just be like, you know what, I'm gonna name this guy Corrin. <laughs> I don't know, that's just... Um, well... The recording is kind of scrapped because of the, um, the audio was yeah, mediocre. Yeah, yeah but, but how did the character turn out, let's say? <laughs> oh, the character turned out pretty good. Um, it looked like, it, it, well, it had the red eyes, it had the white hair, it just wasn't in the right style. And I made him really, really freaking short. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Go. And I... I think it worked out pretty good. I mean, Xenoblade Chronicles X, that's definitely... Oh, I, I... I love the fact that there's a character creator, but I think it kind of breaks the immersion a little bit, because you you can actually... There's so many choices, there's so many things that you can do with um, character design. Character design in games, it's just like... It can either be a really good thing, or it can be a really bad thing. Such as people creating, like, Sonic, and having him run around on Mira, and, you know... <laughs> you know, too fast for me. Uh, yeah. I... I don't think that... It, it, yeah. I think Corrin, or Robin, or something... It, yeah, one of the Fire Emblem avatars, I think that would actually be a really good idea... In theory, because of how in the game, um, spoiler territory, <clears throat> but um, you can actually change your appearance later on in the game, where you are able to even change your character's gender and identity, which is really, really bizarre and a first for any game with character customization. Because you can actually change your character's gender. Whoa, 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 whoa! Now we're t now we're delving into some deep territory. You can even change their voice. You can change how tall they are. Oh, man. So that's why I decided, ultimately, like, for the people that want to um, break immersion, don't don't listen to me when I say this. The reason why I'm going with a gender-neutral name like Robin or Corin is because the fact that I want to show off the feature and basically my character's going to be changing gender at, the very, uh, at that very point in the game. Well, changing gender in the sort of sense is just like, okay, my character starts out as a male character and whatever, it's just like, oh, it's not really breaking the immersion a little bit. But now I'm going to show a feature that breaks the immersion, like, entirely, <laughs> which is uh, Yardley's little scheme, you know? I um, change my character, um, I mean, like, you can't change the name. You can't change the name at all. But... Yeah. It, that, that, that's, a, that's a good feature, that's, um, at least that's good. And that's why I think of naming my character, like, um, Corin, Kamui, or 
I mean, a Robin or a Refle, you know, just something, something unique and, and something that's gender neutral. Gender neutral so that it, it's just like a, how my character um, on my main file is being named Midori. Midori is um, Japanese for green and honestly in most aspects it is used as a female name. That's why it's just like, oh, that kind of breaks the immersion a little bit. I can't really change my character to this other gender completely because it's just like, oh, a guy with a girl's name, all right. <laughs> but it's, um, I mean, yeah, you could do that with a character named Leslie, I guess, but <laughs> I, I don't know. That's just how I think about it. It's definitely where I'm, I'm on the fence. It's like, um, I'll either name my character, um, one of those four names, Robin, Refle, um, Corin, or Kamui. Of course, all of the names from Fire Emblem Awakening and Fates, but, you know. What, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, well, I don't know. For me, I'd say, I don't know. I feel like, well, in terms of options that are available in-game, um, I feel like a lot of the time people really enjoy that. And, I mean, honestly, there's, I don't know, there's the question of, like, um, immersion and, you know, if, like, I feel like game developers, like, when it comes to developing a game and making a game, um, they're, they either are going to put the player on a very linear path that will provide, that will make it so that the developer has full control over the immersion that the player is put in. Um, yeah. Or the developers can make it so that there's a lot more customization and that sort of thing and people can get more creative with that content and can get creative with wh how they do things um the downside to that is that if there is if with things being less linear like that um it makes it so that the when the developers are making that game um the content has to be a bit more, you know, kind of generalized, so yeah. that it doesn't break the game if a car if the player customizes something or changes something to be, you know, unique or different to however they like. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of like a flip flop in for that, um, in that sense. Um, but you know, I don't know. I personally, I kind of like the idea of the character customization features um yeah. i like you know if, if someone wants to be able to you know jokingly make a a sonic the hedgehog you know <laughs> character or whatever and and go run run everywhere in their blue cat with their blue character you know yeah um, that that's fun and it kind of it fits with uh it fits with the way the internet is today where people like to be yeah. silly they like to you know, do stupid things, um, and they <laughs> yeah. like to incorporate that into things like playing video games and stuff. So, I'd say, you know, um, I like, I overall like the idea of the, that, that, t those types of features, um, but I can definitely see where, um, where, uh, it can break the immersion, on um, in that way. Um, in terms of the other stuff you're talking about, um, I'm just gonna leave, leave that where it is, because, um, you know, um, you know, uh, my my knowledge only goes so far, but yeah. um, but but you know that that's definitely how I feel in in terms of at least that area right there. So yeah. oh yeah, yeah, like um generalization in games. Yeah, yeah, you brought the you brought up the topic of um generalization. Um, generalization in most cases, like in a game, it's where uh, okay, when a character is I mean, like, you know, however, in in the original game, th like, this is such a big s I mean, switch. Like, I, I think this is a really big shift because you are given a character that you can fully customize. While in the original game, it's just like, where's my character? Where, where am I in the story? There, you don't have a, you don't have a character. <laughs> oh. Right, right. <laughs> it, it, well, it's also like in, um, like, the... Let's say Final Fantasy um, 
I mean, Final Fantasy from, like, onward on a standpoint from... I mean, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, there we go. Final Fantasy VII, that was where you actually had control over, um... Nothing. <laughs> you had control over the name of your file, but you had control over nothing. <laughs> and, uh, it's like you play as Cloud. Sure. There you go. Yeah. You, yeah. you make choices, kind of, on his behalf, but he does talk for you. Right, right. And in a way, it makes me kind of feel like in um, Xenoblade Chronicles X, what they could have done is, um, instead of making the character that's just, like, um, light-spoken, like, a Gordon Freeman-type character, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It, yeah, completely silent, but, you know, makes a few decisions and talks through actions, basically. Well, in Xenoblade Chronicles X, might I say that you actually have the choice of a battle... I mean, of a battle voice. A battle voice as in, like, okay, I can activate a soul voice command, or um, give buffs to my teammates during battle, and also my character talks during battle. In a sort of way. Yeah, it's like... Why would you add that sort of feature when the characters aren't even talking during cutscenes? Yeah, yeah, think about that. Yeah, you know, yeah, that that is an interesting point right there. That's, you know, that's um, I don't know. I feel like the it's like one of those positions where maybe the developers were kind of ripped in, you know, trying to figure out how much, you know, what what they wanted to have, what they how much um, choice they wanted to give a player, um, and. And, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes when they're, you know, trying to give options for a player, sometimes that can, that can, you know, that can either make or break a game. Um, and I feel like in this situation, it's definitely, it's not breaking it, but it's, yeah. um, it's, it's just, you know, it, it people with a, can have their opinions and they can, um, they, it makes it so we can do things like discuss it, like we are right now. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, that's that. Um, I just want to say real quick, um, I'd like to, um, just to make sure that we, um, we cover all, all of the things that we want to talk about. Here. Oh, yeah, 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 because we've... I'd we like want... to make sure to talk, remind you that we can talk about other things, too. Also, we can, I'm, I'm happy doing this, so, you know, we could, um, we could, um, if you want, we could do, uh, split, split the, um, stuff on, on, on the notepad, we can split some of that up between this video and this, this recording and yeah because i could get I, mean, I could definitely get chrissy to do you know, more um videos with me again i mean it's just like she's sitting around at work and she's just like oh i i want something to do oh here um oh robert's online i i i'll go talk to him i'll, I'll see what he wants oh he me he wants me to play a game that i don't even need to give input on and i can just say okay go that direction or like read you know, you know, read dialogue that's on the screen it's just like that's pretty much what she was doing during that you know, during the recording that you're actually seeing right now people at home it's uh it's pretty interesting well it's also because she doesn't really want to talk <laughs> she doesn't really want to talk she's more of the you know, person that's just like managing the channel and you know, all that sort of stuff and it's just like she's there to create videos that are filler that's how i would say but hold on, let's let's just hold on. I'd just like to, you know, I haven't really um, talked to her at all or met her or anything. But I no. just want to give give, yeah. And I, and I know what you're saying, but you know, give when we say filler, you know, filler is just as important as what you see up front. In fact, it's the it's the underlying basis of what makes you know what makes a channel run. She's the she's probably I'd say the the engine. She's what makes, you know, not, not everyone looks under the hood all the time of the car, but if the engine yeah. weren't there, the car wouldn't go to begin with. So, you know, right. I just like to, that's my, that's my way of putting it. Yeah, and she does reveal herself from the shadows. Like, she does, um, occasionally from time to time, like, edit the descriptions or whatever, just, like, make herself known. And sometimes she even corrects the names on um, some of the playlists or um, videos. I mean, I make extra sure to you know, make it look proper and all that sort of thing. But she is the one that's like the brains behind um, ICG Crusaders. I I founded it. She's the one that's maintaining it. It's just like I'm mostly working on um, my RPG and that I've been working on for like a while now. Like that's not part of the agenda or anything, but I'm just saying 
that's that's for next discussion. <laughs> but, yeah, that sounds uh, good. Yeah, yeah, where we start talking about uh, Project Eighth Note and its crazy harebrained schemes. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's not let's not give, go too much into that. But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you'll all find out a little bit about um a little bit about Project Eighth Note and the the crazy and fun ideas that Robert has. For oh that, yeah, so. definitely. Like I've already fleshed out the world and everything, but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for okay, another yeah. time. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, if uh, I mean, well, when this thing gets on YouTube, then uh, Chrissy's just going to be like right behind the sidelines, just uh, nodding and probably post a comment or whatever. I mean, I, I it, because this is a shared um, this is a shared account. Um, this is actually where me and Chrissy both share the account at the same time. I mean, I use it for like uh, it, because you can actually log on to. And two computers at once while I mean, using a Google account, so it's just, it's infinitely great because she just pulls it up on her computer while she's out working, whatever. Yeah. She has plenty of free time. I mean, she's just managing a store. It's just not really that, not really that hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, I think we're going to move on to the topic of Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Fates. I uh. I've been getting a lot into Fire Emblem Awakening um, recently. Like, I've been playing it so intensely that I've been playing, like, what, five-hour sessions? I've just been getting so much into it, <laughs> just, like, grinding my characters, whatever. I need to make them extremely powerful. I need to get the right, I need to get the right skills. It, in that way, it's like, those sorts of games are very addicting, and um, Fire Emblem Fates, it's definitely, it's a, it's, basically the same take on um, Fire Emblem Awakening in the sort of sense where you do have an Avatar character. Like, they loved that from the in previous game. They loved that in Japan. They were just like, oh, give us more Fire Emblem Awakening. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, no, limited content. Oh, we released downloadable content for, like, a little bit of time. Oh, that's not enough. We need another game. And then it's like, okay, <laughs> we'll do that then. But it's like, um, because Fire Emblem Fates was so popular in Japan, and, uh, you know, Smash Brothers, give or take, Smash Brothers is based in Japan. <laughs> so you kind of put one and one together, yeah, Korn becomes a new character. Oh, okay. A, a character for Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem's not that popular in America, or, like, pretty much anywhere else, to be honest. It's more of which just, like, extremely popular in Japan. It's just, like, it, you, you could look anywhere. You could see Fire Emblem something, something or other. And I think that's really cool. And I think that's I mean, interesting that it's just like, oh, uh, let's put our country first. But to be honest, they kind of make the right decisions, just saying. <laughs> they make the right yeah, decisions yeah. because Korin is actually a really good character. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Fates because I... After playing as Korn for a little while, then I was just like, you know what? I feel like playing you know, Fire Emblem Awakening again. I, I feel like getting back into the action. And I'm just like, oh, all right. Yeah, Fire Emblem Awakening is right there. It's just... Uh... And then I um, started playing it I mean, from the very start. And then I was just like, oh, man. What was I missing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was I missing? Oh, it's just I wasn't really paying attention to what I was supposed to be doing in the game. I was supposed to be making progress. I was supposed to actually do something with, um... In those sorts of games, it's like, you can play it well. You can play it definitely very good. You can play it classic, or you can play it normal. Normal as in just like, oh, a, a character dies in combat. No, they are, they're not dead forever. You, you just, uh, you don't have that character during the rest of the battle. Okay. It's more like, you know, I'd, I'd compare it to, uh, Pokemon's, uh, fainting system, where the Pokemon yeah. faint instead of dying. Well, yeah, in that sort of case, it's a retreat factor, actually. Retreat yeah. factor is, um, where I must withdraw, that sort of thing, and, um... In classic mode, you have the added fear of just, like, you can't save during combat. Like, you can't do that. You can you can bookmark, but you can't save during combat. And, um... Uh... It's where, when a character reaches zero HP, 
your only choices here are, okay, um, let the character be gone for the rest of the game, or, <laughs> or restart the game, which I do often. <laughs> Except not as often now, because of how I actually pay attention to what I'm doing and I know what I'm supposed to do. It's like in those sorts of games, I... I very much applaud that if you're paying attention and you know what you're supposed to be doing, you won't fail. <laughs> Same right. thing in Fates, huh? Yeah, no, no, um, definitely. I I just want to, um, I wanted to be clear, when you say restart the game, you mean just, like, hard reset. Hard uh, reset. To, it, it, no, not mean, hard like, reset. You don't, you don't mean, you don't mean to restart, like, from the beginning of the game, you just mean to restart to your Yeah, boot up save. the program. Reboot yeah, the yeah, so you yeah just reboot. Need to go back to your last save is what you mean. Exactly. Okay, yeah. All right. I just wanted to make sure because the first second I thought, wait, you restart the entire game. <laughs> oh man. It, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's where it's in sort of cases where I actually have lost two characters, but these two characters I haven't even really bonded with. They they were just like they were there, and I even lost them in the first battle that I even had them in. So. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. It, 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 um, yeah, good old Gaius and Libra, they they died during combat, <laughs> whatever. But um, there was one character, uh, actually one of the children characters that you get later on in the game, Severa, Severa, ooh. One of my favorite child characters, and then I didn't get her because I did something very specific in her mission that made her just be like, all right, I'm not joining your team, and I'm never going to join your team. Okay. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that was even my character's child character, so, yeah. <laughs> and That's rough, dude. Well, Severa's kind of a... A lot of people are just like, oh, I don't like Severa's attitude. She she's, she's all super snarky and has a bad attitude and low self-esteem. It's you know, very hard to relate to this character, and it's just like, oh, well... Give or take, that's actually one of my favorite personalities of you know, all of the children characters. I mean, don't get me started on Inigo, <laughs> but um, yeah, Severa's uh, what many would call a sundera. Sundera is um, a Japanese term for just like, uh, says the opposite of what they mean, but it's like low self-esteem and bad attitude, but once you really get um, through the spikes, then they are pretty sweet on the inside. And that's pretty much what I liked about it, and also because uh, her mom's kind of rocking, you know? <laughs> yeah, she totally reminds me of Chrissy. <laughs> and I tell her that on a regular basis, but that's for another time. <laughs> Yeah, Fire Emblem Fates, I'm definitely excited for the fact that we have a mannequin as our main character. Like, whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> like, that caught me full on in the face, just like, we have a mannequin as our main character now? Mannequin as in, like, half dragon, half human, that sort of thing. They're able to shapeshift into a dragon. I thought that's that was... crazy. Yeah, it, well, I mean, you know from, like, Korn's appearance in Smash, basically. Yeah. How he, eh, how he or she is able to, like, transform into this dragon. Well, that's pretty much what a mannequin does. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And there's variations to mannequins. Like, it, um, there's ground-based mannequins or... Uh, it, well, actually, there's different breeds of mannequins. There's uh, definitely the bulky ones from Nor and Hoshido from Fates uh, that Korin represents. And there is the mannequins from the, I believe it's the Ulysses ha uh, Halidom. Yeah, Ulysses Halidom. And those ones, they look like European-style dragons, like super bulky and, and, and crazy creatures. With they, they just fly during combat, and it's pretty cool. I like it. I mean, a lot of people are just like, eh, eh I, I don't know. I Mannequin, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I I like that sort of thing, and not to mention the fact that every mannequin that I've ever seen in um, Fire Emblem Awakening up till now is an amazing unit. <laughs> so, Fire Emblem Fates mannequins, pretty cool. Anyway, it's um back onto the topic of that. I personally, I mean, it's just like. I know that a lot of people they they give me the the, the 
playful term of just like, ha ha, you're a weeaboo, that sort of thing. It's just like, well, I excuse me for having a passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excuse me for having a passion. I mean, I, I don't go and criticize your music that you listen to. I I I'm more of just like, oh, I, what a shame. I, I wish you listened to the same thing. But it's like, oh, you like things from this certain area. You, therefore, are something I can make fun of. Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't criticize how much you like German stuff, um, but you criticize me for my Japanese stuff? Okay, um, uh, uh, uh German Abu, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Ger German Abu. But, um, yeah, a lot of people are like that these days, I swear. And, uh, I don't know, so, it's where I mostly side with Japan on a lot of different topics, but that's just because I see the reason behind it. I see the reason to side um, with them, and I think Fire Emblem Fates, it's just like, it's a new take, and put that character in Smash just to get Japan hyped up for it, but it's just like, eh, uh, I, I'm, I'm an American, and I don't like, I mean, I don't like Fire Emblem, I don't know why it's in Smash. <laughs> right. And it's like, come on, no, 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 okay, all right, Wolf, Wolf could have been in the game, yeah, whatever, yeah, sure, Wolf, it, no one really played as Wolf, okay, <laughs> Bayonetta, oh, yeah, oh, baby, let's let Bayonetta into the game, Cloud, ooh, let's bring Square Enix into the, into the fray as well. Ryu, oh yeah, that's definitely a good idea. We, we need a new combat style. And uh, Lucas, uh, so many people are just bugging us about Mother 3. Let's let's just give them something. <laughs> yeah, you agree with me on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just don't understand. It's like... um. I'm semi glad that I, I I'm actually happy that uh, Japan likes to be in the sort of aspect where it's just like oh it's a foreigner okay don't listen to them. I understand that because of um, how they have a different sort of input they think differently like I I would actually say that um, the Japanese they think differently. In my opinion like in my personal experience they think a lot differently like a. Uh, 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 mm. They have interesting interests, I might okay. say. <laughs> wow, look at your, your dynamic vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they have very yeah, I, interesting I interests. And yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and I don't know. It's just in my sort of experience, I've seen the Japanese be like, oh, we are going to do something extremely different from what you would do probably in America, and it's just like, well, they have different tastes, too. Different tastes in the sort of way of just like, um, I don't know, in popular Japanese stuff that you see, like, translated nowadays in uh, America, it's just like, oh, the super attractive male is, um, he looks kind of androgynous, and he, he looks lean. Hmm. <laughs> Super androgynous and looks lean. I, I, yeah, I guess if you're into that sort of thing. But um, then in America, it's just like, oh, big bushy um, Conan the Barbarian type guy. It's just like, it only speaks through grunts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I personally, I, I would prefer the latter because, I mean, come on. I, I mean, well, actually, I prefer a combination between the both, because, I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, androgynous male with a super long, bushy beard. That, that's best. <laughs> but, the best uh, of both worlds, yeah. Yeah, the best of both worlds, and I like that. And uh, definitely, it's just, in this sort of case, a lot of people just don't like the decisions that Japan makes. Well... And that's just because you're not thinking from their I mean, perspective. I think from other people's perspectives on a regular basis, like a lot of people don't do. <laughs> I, I would say that. I mean, just look at our nation's uh, government, just saying. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's, 
de that's definitely it. But, I don't know. A lot of people just don't like it. I, I personally, yeah, cut long story short, because I realize, yeah, we're getting down to the line here. Um, Fire Emblem Fates. Great game. I really, really want to get into that you know, once it really becomes available. Like, I don't know when it's becoming available. Probably next week. <laughs> it's probably going to be available on, what, like the 26th? Oh, man. Early birthday present or something, you know? Heck yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. And speaking speaking of your birthday... There we go, yeah. yeah. Nice segue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I vow to start actually... I vow to actually start doing stuff for the channel on birthday in 227. Yeah, like on my birthday, I'm planning on getting a video editing software so that I can actually, you know, bring... I mean, you know, Aaron the new of um, good old Xenoblade Chronicles X, you know, actually get into it because I realize I need a picture-in-picture -picture software. I mean, a picture-in-picture -picture generating software like uh, Sony Vegas or something. I, I don't know, something that can actually give me the tools I need. However, because I don't have that, um, I had sort of a lack of motivation to even do Let's Plays, because I'm realizing, you know, it's not even going to be that good. But I, I do realize that there are Let's Players out there that don't even put info on the screen. But they just play the game to, like, oh, I'm going to do a 100% run. I'm not even really going to tell you where to go. You just watch me, what I'm doing. And I guess, in a way, that's actually it's, it's see what I'm doing sort of thing. Right. But I also like the factor that um, one person I really like to watch, uh, he puts, like, info on the screen, and I'm just like, you know, you can only do that if you have picture-in-picture. Picture. And right. I actually started to think, you know, I'm going to get a picture-in-picture picture software, and that's the only way I'm really going to make effective videos. So I incorporate both those sorts of trends together, and... Voila, I got these videos that I'm probably going to be making. <laughs> probably, no, I'm going to be making. What am I saying? Right, anyway, right. yeah. And I plan to get this video editing software right on my birthday, just like, okay, once I got this money got, and once I got this money coming in, I'm gonna get that right and right away because I need I definitely need that software. <laughs> if I want to be pr productive. But, anyway. Wow. I... Let's see. Robert's uh, recent uh, RPG fascination of light. Well, yeah, I've been playing way too much RPG games lately, which is surprising, even for me, because um, I normally, uh, from time to time, I just go on to, uh, what, my little Vocaloid game, oh, ha, ha, point fingers at me, I'm, I'm a weeaboo, I play Hatsune Miku games, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, point fingers at me for that, uh, but here's the thing. I used to play, like, a whole bunch of that. In fact, I ever since I started playing Fire Emblem Awakening, I haven't even really touched that game much. And I used to use that game as an alarm, because it has an alarm function system in that. Yeah. Like, freaking amazing, dude. That's, that, that's, I, I said it every single morning. I said it every single morning for, like, 6.30 or something. I'm just like, all right, I got up early for once. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's one of the benefits of using an alarm, yes, but this one's personalized and, uh, I mean, hey, I I'm a fan of cute stuff. I'm, I'm a fan of them uh, Nendoroid uh, Vocaloid characters on Hatsune Miku. I, I, I enjoy that very much. <laughs> But over here, or, or me over here, I'm just like, what about hemorrhoids? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, like, what are you talking about? No, 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 no yeah, yeah, oids, oi, oh, okay, oi, the okay. oids, but um, nendoroids. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like showing it. It's uh, basically those little uh, Japanese um, action figure things that you can assemble together and all that, and it's oh, cool, pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah. They're very popular in Japan, of course, and then in America, ooh, no, not so much. I, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> anyway, it's like, yeah, 
I've been very fascinated with um, RPG games, and that's probably why I'm starting out with Xenoblade Chronicles X um, as my first Let's Play. <laughs> but I also plan to do Super Mario Maker as a side Let's Play. That's going to be very short. Like, all I have to do is just, like, check in on it every single day, just like, oh, I got this material. Oh, I got this material. And then every once in a while, I'll just be like, you know what, I feel like doing a creator's workshop, I'm going to actually create a level on video, like, you get to see me do the entire thing, start to finish, and I think that would be really cool, but, uh, I don't know, I I'm just thinking, I'm thinking aloud here, because, uh, it's not in motion yet, it's not in motion at all. <laughs> right, right, I, it's I, something that we can, yeah, listen to and observe, and something that you're going to be, you're planning ahead for. Yeah, I'm planning ahead, and uh, I'm probably going to be starting uh, Super Mario Maker, like, tonight. I might even man, be so bold. Because I've got a lot of stuff I need to show. <laughs> but, anyway, so we're actually getting down to the wire here, because I'm looking at the timer, and it's, uh, 45. Wow, we've been talking for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh... Jeez, I'm glad if you actually paid attention the whole time and people who were watching at home because uh, I don't know if I was paying attention. I don't even know if this guy was paying attention. <laughs> I was paying attention most of the time, at least. I wanna, I wanna be able to listen and give, be able to give a, a actual legitimate response here. I'm not here just to, just to listen here. Totally. Yeah, it, it's not like I, I and well, I mean, in the future, I'm probably when I'm popular enough, I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll get into streaming. I'm definitely going to get into streaming, just like, um... And once I get through with that enough, hey, maybe I'll get, like, a review copies of games, you know? I, I'd love to get that. Yeah, <laughs> or become a video good. game developer or debug tester. I would love to be a debug tester for video games. I mean, it's just like... I have a developer's eye when it comes to these things. Y yeah. Y yeah, man, we've talked about this before. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I know, I know you, and yeah, you're, you're, and trust me, guys, Robert here, he is the man when it comes to that type of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, because I, I, I like to look at every single little freaking bit inside of a game, just like, all right, I, I gotta see this, I gotta see this, I gotta see that. All right, neat, very neat. I like this feature, and that, that's pretty much my fascination with video games. I don't know. Well, anyways, guys, uh, well, we're at the last minute here, so, uh, oh, wow. This was Robert from MyCG Crusaders, and... And your good old pal Justin right here. All right, and possibly a future ICG um, Crusaders representative. Who knows? <laughs> All right, well, um... See you guys, and take care, whatever you do, uh, don't do drugs and stay in school, and drink lots of milk. Or do oh. the latter. <laughs> also, kale. Kale is really, really, like, nutritious. I don't remember what it was. It has, like, a lot more calcium than milk does, so you could also eat kale. Alright, there you go. Well, it, that, that's for another time. Alright, well, see you guys. Robert from MyCG Crusaders. Peace out.